Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We have the Emerson Theater Collaborative. I knew I would get that out uh, sooner or later. Um, and uh, so tell us how you're related to the Sedona Arts Academy and uh, what is uh, the, the, the gist of your company? Uh, to, hey, you know, it's to provide all kinds of art, but for us as actors, theater for the community, which uh, there's really not a lot here. So the more that we can have, uh, I think there's definitely an audience for it. There's a lot of people here who love theater, who are from big cities, New York, Chicago. Um, so we're, we're here to fill a need. So I'll reverse that. I'll say, start with your name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lawrence Cohen. There we are. And so, Lawrence, you're a native uh, from Sedona, or? No, I've been here about 10 years. I'm originally from Denver. Excellent, excellent. And then how was it that you became involved with the Emerson Theater Collective? Collaborative. Collaborative. <laughs> see, I was just testing you all to see if you remember. Emerson Theater Collaborative. Uh, you audition for shows, and if you get it, good for you. Uh, s s screen Actors Guild member, your first play, your first... Uh, no, I've been, I've been performing for about 30 years. Um, I'm not a, a SAG member, but a non-equity, non-equity actor. Okay, okay. And so, uh, and then uh, tell us about the production that's coming up and, your, and what role are you going to play in it? Uh, I play Sean Leonard. Okay, and Sean Leonard is what kind of character? Well, I don't know how much I want to give away. Okay. <laughs> Pe peak our interest. Uh, Sean Leonard, it'll be a surprise. He, he, there's a lot of not what you think it is in this show. Uh, boy, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. All right. I can say a little bit about the... the so the, the uh, play is about a 72-year-old a a black woman who has an autobiography that becomes a bestseller. Oh, so I know that that's not you. Okay. You're not going to play the 70-year-old black woman, right? No, no. Oh, of course see, not. I thought you were going to give us away. He, he could, hey, it's a modern time these days. You know, acting. He, it's acting. He could be. He could be an amazing shapeshifter. There you go. There you are. Uh, and and her publicist um, has an interaction with all the different people who are involved. That's all I'm going to say. Amazing. Thank you so much. He's the first uh, of our interviews tonight. If I could ask you to just step down uh, this way and I uh, have you to come forward. Tell us your name, please. Audrey Young. And your uh, tack in the play and uh, a, a relationship to the collective. So I've been working with Emerson Theater Collaborative for... <laughs> For four or five years now, um, Camilla came and saw me in The Graduate when I did it in Flagstaff and asked me to come down and start helping out. And I've been helping out ever since, and it's always been a great time. Um, in this show, I play Anna, who is Shalita's friend as well as sister Margaret. Obviously, there's and uh, kind of so this is your first burn. play? No, definitely not. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Tucson, and I started doing theater there with um, Arizona Theater Company as well as the U of A. And then I came to Flagstaff and went to school there, did a lot of theater there, and then from there I've been working with Flagstaff Shakespeare Festival as well as ETC. And uh, now you're a resident in Sedona. I actually live in Rimrock, so I'm a little bit between Sedona and Cottonwood. Right, an artist on the move. Yep, always moving. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just going right into it? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, my name's James Yaw. I'm actually <laughs> from Phoenix. Um, and not originally. I was originally from upstate New York um, a long, long time ago. Um, my connection with the uh, collaborative um, is... About three years ago, was it, we did Alabama Story? Yeah, so about three years ago, um, I had auditioned for a role in uh, Alabama Story, which is another production that uh, Emerson had done um, up here and was honored to get that role. Um, and when this particular opportunity came up, Camilla called me and she's like, hey, I've got something in mind for you. Are you busy in February? Um, and you've, you learn never to say no to Camilla. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> 
So I am uh, I am thrilled to be part of this cast. I, I get the opportunity to play a character in the past. Um, so I kind of am the point counterpoint sort of situation where I'm the origin of a lot okay. of the story. Nah. Um, so it's it's a fascinating yeah, fascinating script, um, exceptionally well written and exceedingly well performed by the rest of these folks. Quick so. question. Uh, what would you say is one of the harder things for your particular skills in re relationship to the play? Is it a harder role for you to play? Did it, it, was there something out of your range of comfort? It's a challenge in that you learn very quickly there's no such thing as a small role, only small actors. But this is a smaller part. It's like fewer lines necessarily in the play, but there's so much meat to who this guy is. So you've got to be able to dig really, really deep and find a way to communicate who this person is to the audience in a very short period of time. And that's a challenge. My, my background is mostly in film. Um, and in film, you get multiple takes. Right, if you didn't right. get it right, you got a, you got a couple of different takes you can do it in. In this case, you've got to hit it. It's one shot, one kill. You've got to get it. That one, that one take, that's all you get, is that one opportunity to, to communicate to the audience who this person is. Live theater does have its challenges. It is it? amazing. It is such a mental exercise to do live theater. You also get and the great feedback from the audience absolutely. immediately. Absolutely, immediately. If you're doing wonderfully, yes. But if you call the collaborative the collective, you know that real quick too, yeah. right? I, uh, <laughs> I, I cut my teeth doing stand-up comedy in the 80s. <laughs> and, there you go. Uh, that's, yeah, immediate feedback, so. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be here all night now. So you're the 70-year-old <gasps> black lady. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, somehow, I knew, somehow I knew that. <laughs> Not 70. Uh, I'm Raquel McKenzie. I play Shalita Burns. That is the editor and... Um, a publisher of Libby Price, who is the 72-year-old black woman who writes the autobiography. So I'm the one that gets to bring it to the world, which is really amazing. It gives this me play, great and working with a collaborative, the collaborative, so award for sorry, I talk a lot. Uh, so I've been doing theater for a very long time. I uh, met uh, Camilla because I I'm worked sorry, with Blackstaff Shakespeare Company and they had lately. saw me in the show and invited me to do a show actually with Audrey last year called Stop Kiss. And wow. yes, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and she sent me another uh, email last year. I was like, I got another show. And I was like, all right, I'm coming. Yeah. Uh, so here I am. And this show, it's very... Well, it's for me, line heavy, but that's not the point. The point is that there's a duality to it that makes you question your own beliefs and your own idea of what's right and what's wrong. Uh, it very much is mirrored in today's society. It uh, questions you of what do you hold true? Is it in your integrity? Is it saving face? Um, it questions, uh, do I have racist undertones? What wow. becomes, begets a racist? And what does that actually mean? And even if you think, you know, this title of wokeness, how woke are you? Because some people are woke and they're still taking naps during the day. Um, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it will, it will show that to you. And no person is 100% uh, righteous or right in this show. Even me, like I don't think. No one is 100% right. Uh, there's trauma that hasn't been addressed in the show and that in turn perpetuates what you do in your life. And I think that speaks so much to the human condition that our own upbringing, our own trauma, our own view of the world will dictate what we do. And even though we think we are making the correct decision, it might not be correct because we can only see through our lens. The show is amazing, B. Luther Hatchie. So. All right, you do have to have a, a wider perspective. Thank you, thank you so much. The Emerson Theater Collaborative, ladies and gentlemen. And it, and it runs from? So we open on the 5th of February, so the 5th, 6th, and 7th. That is 7 p.m. on the 5th and 6th, 2 p.m. on the 7th, and then the 12th and 13th will be at 7 p.m. and 2 p.m. on the 14th. Right here. Right here. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the Emerson Theater Collaborative. Thank you.